Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the world's biggest stars and some of my favourite people. And we've got one for you today, a man who everybody seems to love. We spoke to him a couple of years ago when his album did gangbusters in the charts and he's back with a new three CD, Big Band's Classics, of Len Goodman's Crooners and Swooners and I'm delighted to say he joins us in the studio now. How are you? I'm very, very well. Thank you for asking. I, you know, I got up this morning, jumped out of bed, nothing fell off. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling chipper. Do you open the papers and check you're not in the obituaries and then get out yeah. of bed and think it's going to be good? <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> what a life you've got. I was thinking about you this morning when doing the research. I mean, to have a career in England that's as big as it is is one thing. To have a US career that's as big as it is is another thing. To put the two together is remarkable. You do realise, A, how amazing that is, but B, how privileged you are to be so popular uh, and loved. Let me tell you, uh, I don't know about the love part, but I have always felt that I was privileged and, as well, uh, more lucky than privileged. But all my life, you know, things can turn on a, on a, on a sixpence. And, I, you know, I was so lucky. I was 21 and I found ballroom dancing. Now, if I hadn't done that, I'd have probably still been in North Woolwich working on the docks. Well, no, I wouldn't because they've all gone away now and they're flats. But, uh, you know, I've, I've just been lucky. And then when I was 60 years old, along came Strictly Come Dancing. So, yeah, just a lucky, lucky lad. I don't know where to start with you. We've got a million things to get through. Firstly, I want to compliment you on doing this. I think you were born to do radio, and I want to know if you're going to replace Desmond Carrington because you're the nearest legend we've got <laughs> to a man who loves music. I do the occasional uh, Radio 2 gig. I stand in for um, Paul O'Grady if he's away and so on. And I do enjoy uh, playing music. And, and when, when they first asked me to do it, I said, I will do it, but I only want to play my own music. You know, what I want to play. I don't want somebody to make up a track listing and I just turn up and say, here we go with this, that and the other. So I always like to pick because I love music. And, and it was the same when uh, Sony came along and said, look, we want to do a CD of, of all your favourite male and female singers and, and, and some of the great songs that you love. Well, it was a no-brainer. I grew up listening to, or you know, I, uh, to, to Sinatra and... Uh, Tony Bennett, Perry Como, Ella Fitzgerald. I, I grew up with those people, so it was just a pleasure. And then we look at the voices you've chosen, because these are all so wonderful and unique, from Garland to Vaughan, Billie Holiday, and, of course, Etta James. Who is the best of them all? I mean, Mama Cass is in there, another extraordinary singer. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and Eva Cassidy, I think, you know, she had such a purity in her voice. I've got to say, uh, probably my favourite female singer... Uh, would be Ella Fitzgerald, I think, who I, who I was lucky enough when I was a teenager to go and see a couple of times, you know, at the, at, at, at the Festival Hall, I think. Yeah, so I saw Ella. Uh, and, and, and as for the men, well, I don't know, Sinatra or Tony Bennett. It's, it's difficult. I went to see, funnily enough, when I was in America doing the old Dancing with the Stars, I think it was last year, I went to see Johnny Mathis, and still terrific, still great, and out he came. And I also went to see, who was the other one? I thought, Paul Anker. I tell you what, what an entertainer he is. He, he's incredible. It, listen, as, as a, a songwriter or as a musician, if you never did anything else but write my way, your work is done. So you, you, you're dead on. So, yeah. You talk about these people who are all legends to us, but, of course, to others, you're a legend to them. Wow. Is it still strange when people come on Strictly or the American version and, oh, my God, there's Len and they want to meet you? Does that ever become normal? No, because I find, I, no, because, you know, I, I don't, I can't talk about other people, but I can only talk about myself. I have no feeling of being a celebrity at all. I, I know people must say, well, you must do. I, I don't. I'm just Len Goodman, who was a dance teacher in Dartford, who, who got on Strictly and so on. And I'm just a, I'm just a geezer. Um, but then, uh, you know, I'm walking along, i uh, and somebody will come up and say, oh, Len, my mum loves you. Can we have a selfie? Yeah, of course you can. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's weird. It's weird. 
And I ask around the BBC what you're like, and it seems to me you're old school. You have respect for everybody from the cleaner upwards to the stars on the show. You're, you're a people person, aren't you? Yeah, well, I, you know, the thing is, uh, we're, we're all uh, we're all on this world doing our jobs and getting getting along in life as best we can. I I, I don't like these people that are you know above their above themselves or think they're they're better than that. We're all only people. Then we just you know we've all got to get along as as much as we can. So yeah, I don't I would I hate all that. I'd hate somebody to you know to say oh I bumped into Len Goodman and uh, asked him for a photo and he said no and what a stuck up. Uh, blokey I would hate that you know it would be awful for me I interviewed the Duchess of York once and she said to me just remember at the end of the day we all have to flush the loo and I thought you make a very good point uh, that is exactly right yes <laughs> yeah it's very good yeah let's yeah. talk about your year because it's been extraordinary does it ever become normal when you find yourself on the front of a newspaper and people are constantly talking about you and it's ramping up and by Christmas we're going to be going out of our minds about the fact you're leaving strictly were you surprised by the reaction yes I was to a degree because you know I'm only a cog in in, in the strictly wheel really and uh, you know it's 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 very nice and very flattering of people to say oh Liam we're going to miss you but I'd rather they said that than they said oh thank god he's going I've got lots of interesting things to come I'm sure you know people will ask me to do other little jobs maybe I've got I've got my granddaughter to go out and play with I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a lovely time I'm going to be an avid watcher of strictly and I'll probably be sitting at home saying to my wife oh what a ridiculous thing to say we've all got to have opinions about everything and and so it is the, the only thing I disagree with you about, you've said publicly that it's the right time. I'm not sure I agree with you. We still love you. There's no sign the show is failing and we want you there. Why did you feel it was the right time? Because I don't feel that. Well, I, I just I just felt, I, as I say, I've done it for 12 years. I want to spend a bit more time with my family. I want, I want to see my son and my grandchildren. And I just think it's time to uh, move on. Move on. And there's no sign of you retiring. I mean, you're always busy. I was just looking at your Twitter. Why are you grumpy, by the way? Well, I was in America, and one of the judges is a girl called Carrie Ann Anaba, and she said, you're not on Twitter. I said, no. I said, I'll never tweet anyway, so... No. She said, oh, cut, you should be on it. I said, well, I said, no, I don't want to. She said, oh, don't be so grumpy. I said, oh, well, go on then, uh, we'll do it. And so then it came down to what your name is, you know, your... And so uh, I said, well, just put Len Goodman. And anyway, it didn't work. It was too many letters. I don't know. Something happened. So she said, well, we can't have that. It's not. Uh. So I said, well, just put anything that you like. Oh, she said, you're grumpy. I'm going to call you grumpy. And she put grumpy L. Goodman. And, <laughs> and so that's how it is. And that's what it was. So there you are. <laughs> I saw this week, there you were, you had a Disney week in America. Again, we spoke about this before, and we won't go over old ground, but I mean, your life is extraordinary on planes half the week and then coming back to the UK for the other half. You're going to continue with Dancing with the Stars, so there's no chance of retiring, is that right? Yeah, well, the, the, the thing is, my contract on the British show is it finishes uh, after this one, and but uh, I've still got, I think it's one more to do in America to finish their contract, so... I have to go back to do that just just, just for that reason. So I will go back. But, uh, you know, the thing is, I, when I go out there in the spring to do their show, I'm out there for 10 weeks. So my wife comes out uh, for a couple of weeks. My son will come out with my granddaughter and maybe they'll go off to Disneyland or whatever. So, you know, I have lots of people coming over and I'm sitting in the sunshine in uh, Los Angeles uh, and, and finishing off the winter, really. I'll go out there in February and come back at the uh, end of April. So, And then I'm back in Britain for the lovely summer. Isn't it amazing when you look at how you started, which was really as a hard worker of show business, it's never going to be easy when you're at the bottom. You've made your way to the top. Do you pinch yourself sometimes when you're sat by that pool that you've oh. managed to create this incredible life for yourself? All the time. All the time, I honestly can't believe it. I, I really can't. And when I when I think back to when I, just before I left school, uh, the headmaster at my school, Mr. Daniels, I remember the last thing he said to me, "Goodman, you'll always be a failure." That's what well, I did. I was laughed about all the time. As I wasn't naughty at school, you know, I wasn't, 
like you get nowadays with with kids in schools are awful, you know. But I was always a cheeky little chappy and a, yeah, a bit of an imp. I was fortunate enough at twenty one to discover ballroom dancing and to find I loved it and I had a a bit of a talent to do it and then. Opened a dance studio and, and that all seemed to work and became a judge on on come dance in the original uh, series you know back in the, back in the day I judged on that and then and then when I was sixty Strictly came along so it's all of, all a bit of luck really but anyway what a bit of luck for me. What's your favourite thing in life to do now? If you didn't have to go and do the American show and you didn't have to turn up on Saturday and Sunday for the BBC, would you be on a golf course? Where's your happiest place? Yeah, I like playing golf with my mates. That's I enjoy very much. I like going out and about with my wife, especially if if my son and uh, granddaughter and 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 my son's wife can all come, come along. A family days out and that I love that Sunday lunch with us all is great. And you know, and and I'm so fortunate because I did Strictly and this and that. You you end up, you know, I'm not wealthy, but you get a, you've got a few bob, you've got enough to pay for Sunday lunch for the family and this and that, and it's just lovely. Hang on a minute, you're not wealthy. You're one of the biggest stars in the world. You can't say no, that. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not at all. No, I wouldn't. As I say, I don't consider myself a star in any way. I'm I'm just a a part of a of a dance program. I'm one of the judges on a dance program, uh, but I'm still only Len Goodman, who came from Bethnal Green, and uh, I am what I am. Do yeah. you feel blessed that you were part of the final part of Bruce Forsyth's career? I don't know whether you feel the same as me, but to me, he's probably the greatest TV personality we've ever had in this country. When we look back at what he did at the Palladium yeah. at the beginning of his career, what a legend. Yeah, sure. And for you to be there with him is such a thrill. It was wonderful. You know, I grew up with Bruce Forsyth, you know, as you say, Sunday night at the London Palladium. And, and and throughout, you know, I grew up watching Bruce Forsyth. And there I am on a Saturday night, little Len, uh, walking into the BBC studios and I'm shaking hands with Bruce Forsyth and so having a chat and this and that. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, you beggars believe you can't believe it, really. It was just brilliant. Amazing. And we wish him well. I mean, he deserves a retirement and he deserves to put his feet up. He's worked so hard. Oh, 70 odd years, you know, good lie. You know, I've had enough after 12. I think I can't do anything. I'm exhausted. You know, 70 years. What about the Bake Off? Oh, could we tempt you with that? We need a new presenter for the well, Bake Off. I could be the new Paul Hollywood. Well, the trouble is, I know nothing about Bake It. What we could do, Mary Berry could be in charge of the soggy bottoms and this and that. And I would just eat it. <laughs> You'd eat the soggy bottom. And I would, I would be, I'd just say, oh, yeah, that tastes lovely. Yeah, I'd be the taster. Before we go, I've got to ask you, do you care who replaces you? Are the press are whipping themselves up into a frenzy over this? I can tell you, no one knows that the producer, I spoke to the producers, you know, who's going to take over. They said, we're not even going to give it any thought until this series is over. We've got so much on our plates just getting through this series. We're going to wait till the series finishes uh, and then Christmas and then in the new year we will make a a decision on who's going to take over. So personally, I I hope it is somebody from the world of ballroom and Latin rather than somebody from, you know, stage dancing. So, but. But honestly, whoever they pick, I'm sure it'll be the right decision. Len Goodman, I love you very much. You're a huge star and a great personality. The new album, Crooners and Swinners, is available now. We love you very much. Thank you for the memories, Len. Thank you, Alex. Cheers.